now it is time for an exercise session. In the next few exercises, you can try out what we learned so far in this course. By the way, if you go to r-tutorials.com, you can check out the exercise database, where you will find many more examples. I will present the questions and after that the solutions. You can pause the video and code it in our studio. Alright, exercise number one. The first thing you should do is to create the object myObject, which is a simple integer vector from 1 to 10. And you should do this in three different ways. I showed you several methods in how you can do those assignments. Arrows to different sides, equal signs and so on. Next, you would simply get the sum of this object. Uh, this should be 55, by the way. In question number 3, you would create the following vector. And you should use the function paste for this one. Note that this character vector has a specific structure. There are two strings that are always the same, but the middle part is different in numbers. Use those patterns skillfully to have as little code as possible. In question number 4, you want to create the vector x, which consists of the values 1, 2 and 3. You want to repeat the vector in this very sequence 10 times, but you want the first and the last value to be a 1. That means there needs to be an extra one at the end of the sequence. And at last you want to find out which value this vector has on index position number 7. Alright guys, so those are our first 5 exercises. You can try your luck in RStudio first. Do not just watch the solution code, but do try it yourself. Coding is best learned by creating your own pieces of code. Only when you make your hands dirty will you be able to solve your own problems in R. So pause this video now and revisit as soon as you have a solution ready or you get stuck. Alright, let's now start with the solutions to our five exercises. The first task was to create an object called my object in at least three different ways. This object was a simple integer vector from 1 to 10. Basically we have two components, the object name, my object, on the left side and the integers 1 through 10 on the right side. We need a link so that R knows that my object is now the container for those 10 numbers. We can code it with uh, this arrow symbol or we can code it with an equal symbol. We could also use the arrow to the right side, which would be a modification of the first method I showed you, and we could use the function assign, which has the object name as first argument, of course under quotations. And we have the integers on the second spot of this assign function. All of those four methods outlined here give the exact same result. So there won't be any changes in the environment when I run those four pieces of code. The second task is actually quite simple. We use the object from the first task, put it in round brackets and use the function sum to get the desired result of 55. So that is an easy way in how you can sum up a whole vector. For the next question, we are using the paste function to create a string vector of length 3. Each of those strings consists of three components, which we need to specify. So we state paste as the function name, round brackets, and the first argument is a string of R is great. This of course needs to be under quotations. The exact same goes for the third argument, and I will love it. The middle part is going to be a bit more tricky. It's an integer vector of the values 4, 7 and 45, which we are simply concatenating. With this vector we are also indirectly stating that 
this new string vector will have a length of 3, since there are 3 integers in this middle part. And if we run it, we indeed get the desired output with those 3 strings over here. With the fourth question, we are using the replicate function to create x as our new object. We are setting the function with the simple integers 1 to 3 as the first argument for the data. And then we are simply stating that we want a length of 31. In that way we get the 10 repetitions of the sequence, but we also get the extra value 1 at the end. Of course there are other ways in how to solve this one, but I think this method is quite straightforward. And of course, for this last question, we only need to use the box brackets on 7 for the object x, which gives us the correct value down here in the console, a 1. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed trying out those easy examples on your own. Those exercises are really important, so do not miss them.